Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In the previous tutorial, we added a background and we created a script responsible for moving the player. In this video, we are gonna add a puck and barriers and we are going to utilize Unity's built-in physics for the movement of the puck. Let's get started! We've already set appropriate pixels per unit for our sprites in the first part, which means that now we can just add stuff to the scene and the size should be just right. In the art folder, which contains the art from resocoder.com, we have a sprite called BG Border. We want to add it to the scene. However, we do not want to have it there as an independent game object. This time, it should be a child of the already existent BG game object right here. So we want to drag the BG Border sprite into the scene. And because we want it to be a child of BG game object, we want to select the BG Border in the hierarchy and drag it over to BG. And now, as you can see, it's a child of BG. Now we want to center the transform of BG Border. So X is zero, Y is also zero. And let's rename it to Barrier for Clarity. Next up, let's similarly drag the puck sprite into the scene to create a puck game object. This is all very nice, but when we launch the game, nothing's gonna happen. There is no interaction between the player, the puck and the barrier. For that, we are gonna have to use physics. We will begin with adding a collider to the barrier. You see, although we can see our game objects on the screen, Unity's physics regards them as if they weren't there. To make a lame analogy, game objects without colliders are like air. You know it's there, but you can freely move through it. When you add a collider though, you make the game object into a solid metal. Try moving through that. To add a collider, select Barrier, click on Add Component, Physics 2D, and it's really important not to confuse 2D and 3D physics, and then select Polygon Collider 2D, because our barrier is of irregular shape. Do you see the green lines on the barrier inside the scene view? That's the collider. As you can see, the nice thing about Polygon Collider is that it automatically adheres to the shape of the game object it's sitting on. That way, we do not have to set it up ourselves, and I think that hassle-free is always a good thing. We also need to add colliders to the player and to the puck. However, because they are circle-shaped, we can use a Circle Collider 2D on both of them. So select Player Red, Add Component, Physics 2D, and Circle Collider 2D. And now we want to do the same thing to the puck. Let's try running the game. And strangely, there's still nothing happening. Well, adding colliders is only one part of the problem. In addition to that, we need to also tell Unity which game objects should be taken care of by the built-in physics engine. In other words, we need to let Unity's physics take charge of some of our game objects. We can do that by adding rigidbody 2 d component to our game objects, which we want to be moving around. In our case, it's the puck and the player. So let's add a rigidbody 2 d to the puck by selecting puck and clicking on Add Component, and this time we are gonna search for it, so rigid body 2D, and now let's try launching the game, and as you can see, something is not right. That's because the puck is now affected by gravity. If we want to change that, we need to set the gravity scale to zero. We are also gonna set the linear drag to five, which is something like friction, so that it's going to slow down over time, it's not going to just infinitely fly away. And we also want to freeze rotation under constraints here, because rotation is not important for our game. Now let's do the same thing to the player. So player red, add component, rigid body to D, and also set gravity to zero, and we can leave linear drag at zero because only we are going to be moving the player. And also be sure to click on freeze rotation. At the moment, we are moving around just the transform, but we need to be moving the rigid body if we want physics to take place. So we need to do a little bit of editing inside our player movement script. So open it up, and on top we need to 
at a rigid body 2D and we are gonna name it RB. Then in the start method, we need to assign this rigid body which sits on the player, this one, we need to assign it to this RB field. So we are gonna write RB equals, and now we can actually omit this game object and we can just write get component and we wanna get the component rigid body to D. Basically, when you don't specify from which game object the component should be taken, it's gonna be taken from the game object which this script player movement currently sits on. So we can also delete the game object from here and it's gonna do the same thing. And then finally, for the physics to take place, we need to change this transform position equals mouse pass to RB dot move position and we also want to move to mouse pass. This is really important because otherwise physics is not going to have a clue at which velocity our player game object is traveling. So the physics is going to be just completely wrong. It's not going to be calculated well. And now let's test the game. It works, but there's a small problem. The puck doesn't bounce from the barrier. When we go to the barrier game object, inside the polygon collider 2D, we can see a field called material. We want to create a new physics material 2D in the root directory of assets, so create physics material 2D, and it's going to have friction of 0 and bounciness of 0 0.75. Now we want to drag this material onto the field in the barrier collider like this. Now let's also rename this material to something more descriptive, so bouncy material. Alrighty, let's test again. And now the pug is bouncing beautifully from the barrier. But when the player comes into contact with the barrier, it bounces like crazy. We can fix that by changing the body type of the player's rigid body to be kinematic. So select this dynamic and set it to kinematic. Kinematic rigid bodies aren't affected by forces and other rigid bodies. What's important to us though is that they can still affect other rigid bodies which are dynamic. That's exactly what we want. We want the player to be under our full control while letting the physics step in only to move the puck. On the other hand, we want to leave the puck to be dynamic because we want it to bounce off the barrier. And now, when we launch the game, everything should work. So the puck is still bouncing from the barrier and the player is not jumping like crazy when it collides with the barrier, which is nice. But as you can see, at the moment there's nothing restricting the player's movement, which means we can drag it even through the barrier. Remember that we've set the player's rigid body to kinematic, so it's not affected by outside forces and colliders and stuff. In the next tutorial, we are going to fix that, so subscribe and hit the bell button if you do not want to miss it. I hope that this video helped you. If so, give it a like and also share it with others. If you have any suggestions, questions or anything else to say, please leave a comment. Be sure to follow me on social media, keep learning and see you in the next video.